Well, it's been more than two days that I promised you. Sorry about that. So, in my um, last video, I introduced you to um, the fact that I'm changing things around and uh, I showed you uh, some of the chess programs that I'm going to be using. And uh, this is uh, one of the ones, this is the one that has no uh, chess uh, coordinates on the outside of the board. But I want to talk to you about computers, chess programs, PGN files for those computer programs, and uh, the advent of, of, uh, of, of chess in the computer world. Even uh, the great Gary Kasparov uh, has uh, succumbed to the, to the idea that uh, computers have become the mentors, so to speak, of chess. And, and I will be able to show you some of those games of, of uh, Deep Blue, uh, at least Deep Junior. I know I have some of the PGN files of the Deep Junior. I'm not sure about the Deep Blue. I'm, I have to dig up the ones from Deep, Deep Blue. <clears throat> but uh, it is uh, something of a conundrum, you know, in the, in the computer world. But here's the thing. Chess notation itself and, and, and uh, as you know, my third video, believe it, I, I actually know it's my third video, talks about old chess notation and new chess notation. I'm not sure exactly what year the new algebraic, quote unquote, algebraic chess notation came out, but it was right around the time where, where computers were, were becoming um, something to have at home, a personal computer. Uh, they were becoming the idea of computers being in the home and everything it was also coincided with what the idea of, of uh, looking at these old games now in order to have these old games from way back from the 1600s and and stuff somebody back then would have had to record them so on this first PGN file which I think I explained to you on the first video, uh, recent video, my last video. A PGN file is short for Portable Game Notation. And it is the diligence of chess fanatics and, uh, and uh, enthusiasts and grandmasters who were able to punch in these old games in the new notation with the old notation in their hands so this first game this this first PGN is actually the um, classic games PGN that I have on my computer and I'm not going to uh, back out of this program right at the moment I'll show it to you in a few minutes but I want you to, to first of all make sure that you play this video in high definition so you can see what I'm about to do. On your right side of the screen here, I'm waving my mouse. I'm going to scroll down. In this PGN, in this particular file, there are 836 or 7 games, depending on which way you look. This one's in red. I think there's a duplicate here. I'm not sure what the red means, but let's just say there's, a, there's over 830 games in this one PGN alone. <clears throat> Some of them include as you can see, the one in red is Gary Kasparov, um, and 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 others. But in the beginning of this, we just pull this all the way up. Just I'm going to read this to you verbatim. This uh, last my last video, I I started to read it to you and I glossed over it, but uh, I promised you that I would read this to you. And. I quote, chess notation is a wonderful invention, a time machine that allows us to enjoy chess games of all eras, even those played hundreds of years ago. Here's, here we see one of the first great chess masters, Giacchino Greco, in action. While Greco was credited for developing some gamuts, his main contribution to chess was to publish witty collections of, of games that illustrate his theories. Greco considered the following game one of his best games. So, 
I want you to know that when he published this back in you know hundreds of years ago, it wasn't in this notation. It was in the old notation, and um, we we're lucky enough to have uh, chess enthusiasts and grandmasters everywhere to plug this into the new notation and into the computer, and therefore given us this PGN uh, game, which is uh, a collection of games of 830 some odd games. And this being the first one. Uh, again, not all the PGN files. In fact, this is one of the very few PGN files that have this commentary within it. So I just want to show you this one first. And later on, you know, in, le in the later videos and in, in the upcoming videos I'll have in the near future, um, we'll try to go through games and sort of comment ourselves. Um, again, I have to give this commentary as part of the uh, copyright issues. So, this was known as the Queen's Fianchetto opening. And um, it was a very quick game, and it shows an example of when, you, when you're playing sometimes, you know, as, as in my Chess Master Academy uh, videos that I gave you from, from Chess Master with uh, Josh Waiskins, he talked about <clears throat> how the psychology of the game, uh, if you become greedy, for example, um, you can get caught up and, and suddenly lose within a few moves. And this is one of the first games that talks about that sort of thing. Um, going through this while I'm talking, I'm moving the pieces, as you can see. And it looks like any other normal game, you know, Black may even have a winning chance here. He's attacking uh, White's rook right now. <clears throat> so White comes out with the queen early. Now that would seem like a dangerous thing for White to do. But when Black becomes greedy, so let me uh, start reading this before I get too much of my, to my own commentary. D4 the natural move, b7, bishop, I mean bishop b7, bishop d3. Greco often preferred his bishop to d3 rather than c4 or b5. As this game progresses, you'll see that this piece is perfectly placed. So he's going to back up a little bit. Bishop b7. That's a fianchetto. And this is what he's talking about. Greco often preferred his bishop here. Okay, so okay, Bishop takes G two, Queen H five check, G six. It's interesting. Where right, where's G six? A B C D E F G. <clears throat> Okay, there it is. All right, so before we get to G6, um, I'll read you this. It's interesting that hundreds of years after this game was played, all of the moves so far we s are, are still considered book. If we, if you we weren't aware of the date, you might believe that this game was from the hypermodern movement of the early 20th century. So, so in other words, what they're saying is, I, I've I've played games like this. In other words, I could play this game tomorrow and 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 have almost the same exact moves going on. And there's your G6. Um, it's when Black gets greedy, and that's on the next. As you can see over here, Black gets greedy and loses immediately. So what does he do wrong? What he does wrong is Knight to F6. He gets greedy. He wants to take that queen. But White sees a an immediate checkmate. He White disregards the fact that he's going to take the Black's going to take the rook here. It seems like Black is. I mean, it seems like White is in danger here. But if you look closely, if you just ignore the fact that you're going to lose your rook, if you're playing White, if you ignore the fact that you're going to lose your queen, this is the next best move. White takes the pawn, discovered check. Black gets greedy. 
Black says, oh, okay, I'll take your queen, no problem. But there's a checkmate. Bada bing. A simple bishop, because because black has nothing to block the check with, black cannot get the king out of check. So <clears throat> this is a very quick game in a matter of eight moves. Black is checkmated. But if black had actually done something else, um, and I think that might be in my other PGN viewer, might actually have an alternative move. If black had instead... <clears throat> Um, moved his bishop. I think I could do that here. I don't know if I. I don't know if I'll mess up the PGN file, but I'm gonna do it anyway. If Black had moved here instead, okay, given him a an escape for the king. In the end, Black would have had a good game, but he didn't do that. And instead, he got greedy. And didn't realize that checkmate was the next move. So, anyway, I, I, I hope I uh, started these new way of uh, doing videos okay. I'm a little bit stuttery right now. I'm trying to find my, my uh, new glitch in uh, my new uh, click in uh, doing videos. I'm not doing them with the chess master for a while. So, I'm going to be showing you more games. Um... It doesn't have to be out of these classic games, PGN. I do want to show you right now. Let's uh, go ahead and just close this one off. Well, actually, let's just load. I'm having a little problem with my mouse. Let's just go ahead and load uh, one that I want to show you about PGNs. Like I said, PGNs could be as little as one game. They could be a few hundred games. They could even be thousands of games. I found one while I was playing with it last week when I was trying to figure out what I was going to show you, um, that literally has 10,000 games or more. Like more than 10, like 11,000 games, I think it was. So let me see if I can remember which one that was and show it to you. Was it this one? Let me see. <laughs> wow. Don't remember now. It, oh, it was this one. Okay. Uh, if you notice, I don't know if you can read this. <clears throat> if you're playing it in high definition, you might be able to. This this file is nine, more than nine megs uh, size. Uh, so it's an indication that the, the file holds a lot of games. I want you to see this. Uh, okay. It was asking me if I wanted to save that game because I changed it. Let me see if I can fuddle through this. Um, okay. Uh, and, and you can see that these games are from the year 2001. And they go on. 2004, but look how many games we're looking at. 11,586 games. Wow. I, I thought I had maybe 10,000 games with all the PGNs put together. And it turns out this one file I had on my computer for I don't know how many years because I've, I've, I've transferred it from computer to computer over the decades. Uh, this one file that I collected over the decades literally has 10,000 games in it by itself. So... Uh, I'm not going to run out of games to show you. <clears throat> I'm certainly not going to be able to show you all of them. But um, just to just to make you realize the, the, the beauty of, of having chess programs, these PGN readers, uh, chess programs, and, and, it, and most chess programs nowadays are automatically PGN readers. Um, the beauty of having them is that you can go through games of your choice, games that were, were collected over the over the centuries uh, that grandmasters plugged into the, to the new uh, notation, the, the you know the algebraic notation. Um, just to show you, I mean, the, the, obviously you're looking at the names. Kramnik is is one of the greats. 
Kasparov is going to be in here, and uh, I have quite a few. Uh, I mean, 10 or 11,000 games in one PGN final. That's just that's just more than I can ask for. Let's 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 just uh, show you one more um, to show you that I have uh, some of the Kasparov games. Um, there's actually a file in here somewhere that's actually called Kasparov. Okay. <clears throat> there it is. Okay. Um, and and I'll, I, I think the next video I'm going to actually play this first game and I want to talk about this because I actually went through this game and I wanted to uh, comment and, and talk to you about doing some commentary on this one. I'm going to quickly fast through this game so you can quickly get a hint of what I'm going to be talking about. And I'm only going to give you a taste and you're going to say, wait a minute, wait, play that again. Oh no, don't go so fast. And I'm going to back it up again. So if you can pause it fast enough. <laughs> but that'll be my next video. And uh, But the, the, the idea is that this, this Kasparov file, PGN, has literally 1,962 games. And they're all games from Kasparov. All of them. And I say, all of this PGN file are games that Kasparov played, whether it be with Topolov or, or Kazminich, I don't know how to pronounce that name, or Anand, Vissan, remember Vichy Anand? He's in here, right there. Okay, Kasparov. And um, I, I could even show you who won or lost that game before I even played this. That was that particular game that I'm highlighting right now, it was a draw. So, I just, I'm hoping that you, you um, I, I know that Chessmaster Academy is on hold right now, but uh, in a sense, this is part of the Academy. Um, the idea of showing you the beauty of having a half a dozen or more chess programs on your computer, I have quite a few. And that includes, believe it or not, as much as I hate to, to, to as much as I love to hate Microsoft, um, their chess titans is a iffy chess program. It doesn't play that well, but I got to tell you, um, it is a great way if you're a starting chess player to gauge your progress. Um, when I first got a computer that was able to play chess titans, and, and actually it was my friend's computer when I first started playing chess titans, I was playing level three, and I was having trouble with the level three. Right now, that was a few years ago. Right now, level three is a joke to me. And um, playing around with levels six, seven, and eight. So, uh, uh, you know, even at level 10, Chess Titans doesn't play at, at the highest level. But the idea here is that <clears throat> if you arm your computer with a half a dozen or more chess programs and you're into trying to learn how to play chess, uh, you'll find that each individual program has its nuances that, that you appreciate. This one, for example, um, as you can see, what I'm showing you to me is a plus. Um, if you're looking for the coordinates, I'm going to close this off altogether. And again, you're getting a view of my desktop. This is, by the way, uh, just so that you know, this particular web... Um, I'm sorry. This particular... Windows background is a new photo from Hubble Space Telescope of, of a particular galaxy. But in any case, <clears throat> this other freebie with the chess coordinates available on the sides, and I made it look all nice with the black border and everything. <clears throat> PGN viewer, read a PGN. And I'll open up the same exact one. No, you know what? I'll open up a Fisher. Here's some Bobby Fisher games for you. And as you can see, it loads all these games. This particular has, what? Well, more than I thought. More than 800 Bobby Fisher games. So, in your comments... Um, as I'm doing these videos and I'm, I'm cleaning up my voice, you know, I, I, it, this is all this is a little bit new to me. So I, I mean, I'm doing things a little different now, and I'm trying to make 
these videos uh, educational, I want you to ask me <clears throat> if you're interested in specific players. As you can see, uh, uh, the, these are the Fisher games with Spassky and, and the old timers. Uh, if you're interested in specific games, let me know. I'll play those specific games. But um, the idea here is um, with these first two videos that I'm doing on the new way of doing things, I want to stress the importance of the new age of chess and computers. Um, not all chess programs, not all computer chess programs are that great of players. So I don't want you to become discouraged. Uh, as I was playing Chess Master, for example, they have this elaborate um, way of giving you characters and they rate them and they give them these, these the ratings of 1,200 and 1,400 and, and I end up losing against these lower rating players and I thought I was rated at least 1,600, for example. But it turns out after after a few years of, of experimenting with all these programs that um, first of all the newer the computer the better the chess engine works the same program chess master played a lot less or I shouldn't say a lot but but considerably noticeably less on my Windows XP machine than it did on this one uh, on this computer the same chess master program you literally have to add a couple hundred points to the rating that they're giving these characters. So I don't want you to become discouraged. Um, even even chess titans. Um, um, I, I went through an elaborate experiment with some friends and some nephews of mine uh, to try and rate chess titans levels. And uh, I originally came out with some, some levels that ended up at uh, level 10 was supposedly uh, no more than... Uh, uh, something like a 1700 to 1800 player well when I got this new computer and chess titans came with it um, it turns out that 1900 is more you know accurate again that's just arbitrary but but it, it does definitely play I actually played computer against computer against my nephew's computer and uh, we did an experiment where he would run a few uh, programs. He was on the web and surfing the web and running some video and things like that, and uh, running his Chess Titans program. I was playing against his his Chess Titans, and my level eight, for example, beat his beat the crap out of his level eight. And then when he shut all that down and and, and then uh, played one on one without anything else running, it turns out that they were about evenly matched. So you have to understand that computers power has a lot to do with the way computer programs run so I don't want you to become discouraged um, so I don't know I think I'll end it here um, if, if you're really enthusiastic about learning how to play chess there are freebies including this one that you see on your screen right now the one I'm showing you right now uh, this is a freebie it's Lucas Chess um, there are freebies out there just be careful not to download the uh, adware with it, you know, the, uh, the, the the advertising stuff with it. Um, but there are also ones that you can purchase out there that are excellent. Um, certainly Fritz and, 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 other, and other programs are, are, are some of the ones that the professionals are using. Um, and they come with their own engines. Speaking of chess engines, there are also downloadable chess engines. Um... Again, you're looking at my desktop, but you can see I have a folder here called Engines. Uh, <laughs> Crafty is an old old timer. Um, some of the ones that you know about, the King is actually Chess Masters. Um, there's a few here that don't actually work, but uh, programs like Chess Master. Fritz and a few others, um, and the one that I just had for freebie. Some of these will run. Uh, there's actually uh, Win Winboard is also a web-based uh, PGN viewer that allows you to load your own chess engine. Some of them have two different formats. Uh, some will accept one and not the other, and some will accept both. Uh, chess Master seems to accept one and sometimes the other. Uh, and and it's it's interesting, to, you know. I've actually uh, some of the PGN files I have are <clears throat> labeled tournament, 
these tournaments are are sometimes I loaded chess engines and I played chess engine against chess engine, and uh, I did that through Chess Master. Let me see. Okay, there it is. Um, for example, uh, um, this is uh, the PGN file I just double clicked on. These are Chess Master uh, characters. Mariah is a, is a girl character. Josh is Josh Wakens at the age of seven. Mystery is a chess engine that I, I don't remember. I labeled it Mystery. You know, Ruckus is another chess engine. So I I did these tournaments, which I could play for you. Um, but in any case, this this video is becoming a little bit boring, and I, I don't want to. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to take too much into the idea that uh, I'm going to show you every chess program I have on my computer. But um, as as uh, as these videos go on, I'm going to be focusing more on. Uh, I'm going to be using more one specific chess program to show you some games. Uh, this will be the second video that I showed you some of my desktop and, and ideas of PGN. I want you to get used to the idea of using various chess programs. Don't don't just count on one chess program. I mean, don't don't just count on the fact that you have a new computer and you got Chess Titans because I, I can't seem to find out a way to load those new those games that you saved on Chess Titans. So don't count on that one, but use that one. Use that one to gauge your your progress. Um, but at the same time. Get programs like Chessmaster and, and uh, you know Fritz if you can afford it, um, things like that, <clears throat> and uh, uh, and have a variety of chess programs on your computer that you can play because each program plays in a different way. It's almost like playing different people. Uh, and if you if you're like me, I, I don't have a lot of people to play chess with, so I uh, I ended up collecting these programs so that I can have uh, essentially different characters to play with uh, uh, different ways of playing so you know and then and then I end up playing real people and it, it ends up being nothing like anything any of the programs I own so it's kind of funny anyway so anyway there you have it um, my next video will be closer to showing you one particular program I think I think I'm gonna use from you know from now on I think I'm gonna use uh, the other one that has the coordinates around the uh, border so we're gonna say open with and yeah again you're looking at my desktop I'm not gonna be doing this to you all the time I'm just doing it for these first two videos and well I can open it with Fritz that's chess 11 program I could open it with the Winboard I spoke to you about. Let's do that. Let me show you Winboard. Winboard is something you could also play online with. There you go. And that's what Winboard looks like. All right. And I could just double click on the first game, for example, and it automatically starts playing. Okay, so this is actually. A game that I played against the character Joey on Chess Master. And Winboard was able to open it up and play it for you, showing you the result, which was a draw. And I don't I, I, I it's going too fast for me to comment on it right now. But so any case, um, I hope you get the idea. <clears throat> and uh, the next few videos will be more specific, and uh, I'll be using one program at a time. So keep playing. And don't get frustrated if you can't beat the computer. And if you are getting confident, Play Chess Titans. Start with level one. Level one is easy to beat. A child can beat that one. Okay? Thank you. Keep playing.